Hello, today is Sunday, July 19th, 2020, and it's uh, about 1.20 uh, p.m. here in Pasadena, California, and here is the update for the last week. Uh, we're looking at, on the last call uh, last Wednesday, we talked about uh, the SRI as a potential esports bridge. Uh, this is an idea that needs to be developed further, and I'm waiting for some notes from Alper, and we need to develop this conversation a bit further but he thinks that we may be able to put together an appealing proposition to use the SRI as that product and is actually already starting to talk to some of our old friends from the USFE days to see if some partnership with a, uh, a uh, futures market or maybe using a, an expired license, a dormant license to reactivate may be a way to do this. So. We're looking at that. I, obviously, this would be even better than uh, creating an esports platform because the SRI is our product. So if we can bridge between the pilot market and the real market using our own uh, SRI as the bridge, that would be absolutely perfect. So we're looking at that. Um, just as a commentary, there's a YouTube series called Soft White Underbelly. Uh, it's just really good if you're interested in human stories, especially stories from people uh, at the bottom of, of society and their struggles and how they get there. It's always been my belief that, um, you know, in most cases, these hard luck stories are the result of how they, uh, you know, where they came from, their history and the bad starts and, and you know, things that I can't, uh, you know, I can't connect with because it's not my history, but I'm sympathetic to it. And part of the whole uh, mission here is to, you know, improve things. So, that particular uh, series is really excellent if you, you just have some time and you, you want a fascinating um, a trip through, uh, you know, the, the, the parts of our society that really struggle. So, um, and, and part of that too, uh, in the same kind of thread, you know, I've looked at sports as a way for people to gain political power. And in fact, the, um, the New Sports Economy website, if you actually dig a little bit, you're gonna see that the source domain is mypoliticalpower.com. That's actually what lives behind the, uh, the idea of uh, uh, sports as an asset class, you know, that people will be able to gain political power through sports. Uh, I'm, I mean, you already see that happening with public messaging done by athletes, but I'm actually talking about uh, at, the ground, at the ground level. So that's uh, for later, but I do want to put that on the record now because this has been something I've been thinking about literally since uh, the Costa Rica days back when we really really understood what it was that uh, we were building here in terms of what it was capable of. So, you know, this is more than a decade over old concept that I've uh, been developing in my head. So get to that in more detail as, as time moves on. So another clarification, uh, connection between us and the league, meaning partnerships of any kind, uh, they are to improve the function of the market not required to make it function legally, technically, or economically. Uh, it's, not, it's not an essential part of the puzzle. It is just something that makes everything work better. Every other narrative on that topic, contrary to what I just said, is false, okay? It is not necessary, it is an augmentation uh, that will make everything work better and increase the value of all sports market overall. Uh, the Redskins flap, um, you know, I'm curious to see if this actually gets all the way through all these um, kinds of things we've seen in the past kind of get to a certain point and stall, but uh, there seems to be more action here in this direction than I've seen previously, but I'm still not convinced that anything substantive is going to come out of this. Um, you know, why do I hate gambling? What, what is the reason why I hate gambling? Because gambling is corruption, and I hate corruption. It's not negotiable. It's a bright line for me. It's light and dark. It's black and white. There's no, there's no discussion, so that's why. Gambling is corruption is the answer, and I'm not for corruption. $864 billion budget deficit in June 2020. I, I mean, I said that would be the number pretty close, about a trillion dollars a month. So here we are. Uh, Bill Ackman, I've been watching him for quite a while. Uh, he has had a really uh, successful uh, stock play recently, not the JCPenney thing, a different one. guy like him, his uh, talent seems to be to pick out very long dated black swans. He's a guy that's been calling uh, Herbalife uh, a Ponzi scheme and a fraud forever. Probably will be proven out true, but he's he's really struggling with that one. But 
uh, point of point is is that he uh, did a. I think he took notice of the the SPAC activity, probably specifically DraftKings, uh, and he's decided to open up a four billion dollar SPAC. Um, that's going to legitimize this even further. It's going to take it out of this marginal kind of iffy sort of way of doing things and bring it more mainstream. Um, Alper and I and the team have been talking about this more extensively. Um, again, packaging up our proposition, uh, I think now including the educational stuff. Uh, this is re really just a decision that came a couple days ago uh, Apple, uh, with Alper about how to build that because it's getting to a point of we need to determine, uh, you know, the business structures. So uh, putting all that together, the, the entire proposition, including an educational program, and putting all that together into a SPAC makes it even more uh, potentially successful, right? So my point of this with Ackman is that Ackman is going to bring sunshine to this and that uh, it's going to be taken out of the shadows of uh, things that are marginal and, and put on the, the same footing, even though it probably shouldn't be, but you know it doesn't matter. This is what will happen uh, as every as any other normal IPO. <laughs> sort of a short. It's a real shortcut of the process. I mean, it it's there are there. This is something that we really are going to look at very carefully now. The environment is definitely changing in this direction, and I think we can we can benefit from it. This is not an instant action thing. Okay, I'm tr trying to tamp down these timelines, guys. You have to understand. None of this, we have to get the business structures straight, okay, and get all that stuff first before we can put these things together in a, in a, in a package like this and market it to the investment community. So, but I do think that the stage is being set for that uh, in a way that is, is beneficial to, to not only just, ra not, ra not just raising financing for us to build all of this out finally, instead of nickel and diming everything, but also, as you saw with DraftKings, although they 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 really flooded a lot. Uh, they over flooded the market, and now the backstories are coming on all of that, and it looks pretty bad. But you know, giving some access of liquidity has been something on the table for years for our shareholders. So all of that kind of goes together. But we've got a lot of research to do before we can put together any kind of plan. But but Alper is moving that direction, and again, the the educational part adds a another element uh, to the proposition to make it more appealing to the investment community. So just a, uh, I mean, this is a, not a statistic that you can trust. It's just anecdotal, but my kids don't have any interest in uh, sports gambling or DFS. Neither do, do their friends in their, uh, you know, high teens, low 20s. Um, they are, however, uh, very interested in, um, in, in the stock market, both of them, actually, and, and their friends as well. And, and a lot of that, um, I mean, you see with the Robin Hood activity and unfortunately the scandals also, but... But there's a lot of millennial activity in the uh, in the stock market, so that that bodes more for us than it does for the gambling people if they're attracted to Robinhood. So anyhow, uh, so uh, the what do I mean by selling the ASM tech? And, look, if we can't get regulator, if we can't get the regulators to get their heads out of their collective asses on us and stop fucking around with all this stuff then I'm just going to look to the Chinese, okay? When I mean look to the Chinese, I mean take the whole market over there and reprice it in Chinese currency. That, I mean, make it a Chinese marketplace. And for Americans to access it, you'll have to deal with the Chinese. So, I mean, that's within the realm of possibility. I have the legal power to do it. Alper has talked about it with me. This is not off the table. Uh, I would think it would be a terrible thing to do in terms of uh, what's good for this country and where the benefits are going to accrue because the benefits are going to accrue in whatever currency it's priced in. Okay, it's really that simple. If it were priced in Bitcoin, the Bitcoin world would benefit. If it's priced in dollars, the U.S. Do or uh, United States, because there's dollar, there's other dollars, but the United States dollar, then it's the United States dollar is the base currency, then the United States would be the beneficiary. It's really that simple. So... Uh, for those of you who think that COVID-19 is a uh, some kind of a fraud or a cocked up scheme by the Democrats, Jeff Hazlett knows 12 people who've died from COVID-19, 12, 12 people, okay? That's not a normal flu season. That's not a story that he has every year when, quote, the flu comes around. So just nonsense, utter, utter nonsense, just utter nonsense. Think of what's going on with COVID-19 is a giant reset button slash etch a sketch. You know, I don't know if you know what an etch a sketch is, but uh, 
you know, you mix everything, you, you, you clean the slate and start over. That's what's happening. Uh, Link's loan to us, which periodically comes up as a big threat, is not a threat. It's not a threat because it's a friendly, and Alper's already been talking to him about that. And further, if that's not good enough, I have all the legal controls in place to, content, to keep it from becoming a problem. I'll just leave it there. Uh, this, this, this constant looking for this endless bunch of things that is going to destroy ASM is pretty ridiculous. But I'll go ahead and address that. That one is not one of them. Okay, so keep looking. Uh, a society is only as good as its least member. That's just my personal view of things, and we're failing miserably, miserably, miserably in this country and pretty much everywhere in the world on that one. I have no interest in being a rich man in a poor world, absolutely none, and I've said that for a very long time. The only other time, uh, the only other um, legacy debts are related to the original ASM account balance claims, and those are triggered only when we reach uh, operation with the pilot or the uh, exempt market. So that debt doesn't become a debt or it doesn't exchange for shares, depending on which one you claimed. And, and I know there are people that are going to see this video and know what I'm talking about. We have all those records. You know, it, when, when the original ASM market uh, crashed in the crash of 2008. Well, it, we lost our fight. We lost everything, and you know, because of the crash, we did. We allowed people to claim the value. Now, this is not the shares. This is not the the shares in ASM, but the actual uh, con, uh, value of their ASM accounts when it shut down. We took a tally of all those values, just like I explained in the bonus margin video. That um, we, you know, you sum the value of the account, and then we allowed people to either take that as a uh, accounts payable on the books or stock grant at the time of, you know, in this trigger, there's a trigger. None of this happens unless the trigger is met. Okay. So the company shares were all uh, granted and, and converted uh, properly, but there's another half, which is, I don't know if it's half, but, you know, conceptually half, which is the accounts, the, uh, the, the sports shares accounts. So they were, uh, each person selected, the ones that responded selected one or two options, either debt or equity. So that's a non-debt at the moment. But when we, when we become active, and there's actually another set of conditions about, I think, the stock price, which the point there was to make sure that the company was active enough that it had uh, real operations and a uh, value on the public markets so that I knew that we could afford to intake all of that liability. So it's a it's a liability that only becomes a liability if we make it if we make the goal and then it becomes a liability according to those uh, those terms. If you want to know what it is, you can go to the newsportseconomy.com and go to the search box at the top and type compliant account holder. I think it just those terms alone will bring bring up the whole 10 year old. It's more than 10 years old uh, or about about 10 years old, I guess now uh, uh, the whole process that we went through 10 years ago on that. So I don't want any, I'm going to fact check every piece of false information that comes to me. Every single time it comes to me, it's going to be fact checked. So that's, uh, if you state something in the public domain that as a fact that is false, it's going to come back to me and I'm going to correct it every single time. I will not tolerate that. This world is polluted with nonsense and lies and deceptions and a lot of it being driven by leadership in the White House right now. I'm not going to stand for it. You're going to get fact-checked every single time, every single time you say something that is false. Um, okay, so uh, that's the old account claims. So since we don't have any leadership in Washington, it looks like the states and the industry is going to have to make up the difference. Uh, you can try to play this down, but Walmart and Target uh, and companies at that scale are now mandating masks internally through all their stores nationwide. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the statement right there. I mean... They know the liability. I'll explain to you why this is happening if you're a Trump supporter who can't understand it or thinks it's some kind of – it's simple. It's called, it's called liability, okay? They know this is a real threat. Uh, they have the data. Uh, they know how, how dangerous it is and how much of a threat it is to them as a company. So they're not going to let you go in there and, and put them, their company, at risk. It's that simple. So, so you can continue to stick your head in the sand and pretend like this is all just a made-up, but – you're not going into Walmart or Target without a mask on because they don't want you catching a disease and blaming it on them and suing them. Okay, it's that simple. Uh, the MGM Vegas chief bugging out of town. Uh, yeah, nightmare restart. 
it's a complete mess. Uh, it was going to guarantee to become. I don't know if these people are just insane or stupid or or assholes or what, but this is not hard to figure out. I mean, it's just it's really not. I have to deal with things every single day that are harder to deal with than this kind of a question. So I don't know what the problem is, but they're not getting it right. And so it's just going to keep turning into this nightmare over and over again. So, okay, don't listen. Don't have people follow the rules. Do whatever you like and stay shut down. The longer you stay shut down in Vegas, it's the better for us. Okay? So you're draining cash millions of dollars a day. I'm not dealing with that. You are. So that's your problem. Uh, I, <laughs> incredible. All right. So, you know, stay shut down, actually. Um, it's good for us. ASM pilot market video, I just sent that out. That explains uh, just the pilot market bonus margin stuff. Okay, so I know that question keeps coming up over and again. So I made a video to, to explain it. 32 million, this was as of a couple of days ago, 32 million active unemployment claims, 160 million people in the workforce. That's 20%. So we're being lied to by half. Uh, Jill Lublin said yes to PR. So she's asked me to, this is the original person we talked to. So she said, set a calendar. I'm going to develop this a little bit more before I get her involved because it needs to be an action plan at the point that I get her on the phone. So answer to my question of whether she uh, would help us pitch stories is yes. And this is our original person who at the time when I did the research back in uh, 20, 2013, I think it was, uh, she was the most respected person in PR. She's been doing it almost 30 years. Um, I, I, so here's another thing. Uh, Sheldon Adelson is going to be fighting with DraftKings pretty soon. So all of you guys that think that, you know, this is all going to be hunky-dory is not going to be hunky-dory. Sheldon Adelson uh, made, a, made some sort of a deal with the president about, about, off, about online gaming and competition for Vegas. So I said this many years ago when the point of testing would come, when our moment of, of truth would come, that we're not really going to have to think about those guys because they're going to busily kill each other off. Well, you're going to start to see that because they're going to start to fight over the scraps. They're going to start to fight over market share. You're already starting to see stories about consolidation in Vegas. So these guys, there's the market is shrinking. It's not growing. It's shrinking. Okay. The economy is shrinking. Therefore, the market is shrinking. There's no way around that. So they're going to fight for market share. So that means consolidation and all kinds of fights with each other. Okay. I said this more than 10 years ago when everybody worried about us fighting with the gambling guys when it came time to fight when it really mattered that we got out into the market which is now i agreed that it would be a fight with them directly i do think there are elements of that but i think the bigger issue is that they're going to fight each other <laughs> so we just need to kind of stand back and let the snakes kill and eat each other because that's what they're going to do watch um the governor of georgia is a criminally insane idiot it is unbelievable to me that you would – it's one thing to say we'll let the localities and the uh, other, other government levels make their own decisions. It's another thing to make an overriding mandate that you can't do that. That would be like the president saying that you – know, you, you, instead of saying that it's your choice to wear a mask, he says it is illegal to wear a mask. <laughs> wow. Okay, so tomorrow morning I have a call with a, uh, a video call with the British Rugby League turn to talk about a 500,000 pound capital raise. Short Seller Enrichment Commission. I think maybe Elon was right about this one. Uh, I'm starting to think that that wasn't such a crazy thing to say. And we are looking very, very closely at counterclaims. This has been done before. You can do your own research in the public domain. And if you think I have some kind of fear of the government, I do not, okay? I do not. They can, they can task that entire concrete building full of lawyers. All, they can all appear on my case. They can all show up in the courtroom, but they still have to file documents one at a time, hearings one at a time, just like we do. So I don't care, do whatever you want, okay? I've dealt with Bank of America. It's in my documents, you can see that, okay? I would, I would say Bank of America is a bigger threat because they have higher paid lawyers and there was money at stake and they lost. And they put four lawyers by my account, four or five on my case, and they lost. They lost the house, okay? It's in the public record. I recovered the house and I sold it for a profit, okay? So 
their attempt to steal the house from me with all their lawyers, it failed. Incidentally, <laughs> one of the firms I use is the same firm that Leon used, and he's also going to end up with a big zero. So he's going to have to fight this in federal and state court now. So get your checkbook out there, bucko. Uh, all right. So um, I'm not releasing any specifics of any kind or anything anymore until there's a public press release. And anybody who is bitching and moaning about that, you can thank the idiots and assholes department, and you know who they are. Um, bets and DFS are old sports economy. ASM is the new sports economy. Bets and DFS, old sports economy. ASM, new sports economy. So one of the first things that Jill Lublin taught us uh, when I hired her was something really shocking. She took a newspaper. She took a, a New York Times, and she said, you can do this with any newspaper any newspaper in the, in the country. And she took the front page and she said, what do you see here? And it was a class of about 20 people. And of course, people answer all, I see a story about this. I see this many squares. I see an ad for some blouses. I see nobody got, so she lets everybody answer and, and everybody gives their answers and, she, and nobody got it right. She says, right, and okay, goes through all these answers. She's like, no, no, now here's what I want you to see. Every single story on the front page is a government story. So she went through them one by one. Police actions, permits granted, uh, investigations. Uh, and it's true. It's, it's crazy. It was one of the biggest, it's one of the biggest uh, revelations I can ever remember having in terms of marketing and PR. And her message was, be a government story. Okay? I never forget. If you can, and not everybody can, be a government story. Now listen to this very carefully, okay? Trump supporter or not, listen to this very carefully because you can research this on your own. Trump's biggest PR coup, which kicked off basically his whole scandalous career, and it's scandalous if you open your eyes, was a countersuit against the, the I think the FHA, uh, pretty sure it was the FHA, for discrimination. OK, a countersuit against a government agency, OK, which he lost. He lost a countersuit, but he forced a settlement and he wasn't even interested in the actual claims. He was only interested in the news value. OK, so are you listening? Be a government story, news value of, a, of, of his. And he, but what he ended up doing is forcing a settlement with the FHA, even though they were dead wrong. OK, in our case, the SEC dead wrong okay the code is not there okay i would say i don't care if the lawyers behind this watch this video we know for a fact that the condition of the law does not support this claim as it stands you will have to litigate this in court okay that's risky and you're going to have to put it in front of a jury because you asked for a jury okay so no summary motions that's not going to fly if you try to make a summary judgment motion, we're going to object stringently against it because you asked for a jury trial. So go ahead and put this in front of a jury. I dare you to put this in front of a jury. I dare you. Okay? I dare you. So here's what I'm looking at. Put together some counterclaims that, will, that have legs and then get with Jill and turn it into a news story. Okay? So here's a sample headline. Securities and Exchange Commission deep state bureaucrats plot to destroy COVID-19 cure for sports. I can sell the shit out of that headline and don't think I won't. You know, and it, it makes me wonder, based on the filings and things that I've dealt with in my lifetime with lawyers and even the action of some judges, do you remember the oath that you signed? I mean... Do you remember what that oath says? Because based on my experience in the legal system, an awful lot of you seem to forget who you swore that oath to. I don't know if I would want to be standing at the end of my life, which with COVID-19 could come in two weeks if you get it, catch it, and, and you don't have the, uh, the anti, you know, your, your systems can't defend against it. You got two weeks to live. So I wouldn't want to be dealing with this. If you think there's a God, I would want to be dealing with all of that stuff. I mean, 
Lawyers love to pull filings out and try to accuse people of lies. I see lies on every document the SEC files, and Leon the same. So I'm just wondering if you remember your oath. You know, I think I'll make a video on oaths, maybe to remind you. There are two government stories that came out last week that you need to pay attention to because they're on the front page of several large news aggregators like Yahoo and MSN. It was, it was recovery funds, COVID-19 recovery funds of various types being used to do two things that I've already said are not government policy right now. Crypto, okay? So there were stories about, a big story about a guy taking his money and pissing it away in crypto stuff, and another one about another guy taking it to Vegas and pissing it away. So be clear, that is a PR job, okay, and a message. Don't take the government stimulus money and piss it away on that crap. Okay, so another conversation with uh, Alper was about the B Corp aspect. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to adapt the B Corp structure for Crystal World Holdings, which is kind of a half step in governance between a standard corporation's governance and a nonprofit. We're going to attach the educational system, the paid part of it, leaving the free module behind on, on, uh, on NSEI as, so I can keep the promise to provide free education uh, as, a, as a function of the nonprofit. And the rest will go on to the profit entity, but it will become a B, B Corp, B Corp, okay? And then again, I've already talked about, and that will add to the value also in, in, for some and take it away in others. We'll see how that, but I think the educational element aspect of it, the net of that will be a uh, double positive. It will be positive. It's going to be positive to, to, to bring in the educational program way offsets the, the govern, governance changes that would be made to uh, satisfy being a B Corp. And then Alper introduced the concept of crystals, and these are all the various crystals that are part of the, the, the ASM world, and he's using the first word of the company name, and I actually didn't know about this. He sprung this one on me uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, and I actually absolutely love it. I didn't even know he was thinking along this line. So we're going to develop that a bit more. Uh, there's a Justin Bieber uh, internet trolling lawsuit that's about to change the rules all, for all you guys that think that you can create a pseudonym. And, and crack and, and, on, and terrorize and make up shit and create a bunch of lies in the public domain to harm public people. Uh, California law is about to change. And just so you understand clearly, we, I, Ace, the team, because we're here in California, that's the governing law, okay? So uh, watch your ass. Vegas is a meltdown, already told you that. No baseball in Canada, no MLB, don't come up here, don't do it. You're going to see, this is one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in my entire life. So if this Major League Baseball restart doesn't crash and burn into the ground in very short order, that is if it even gets to the first game, um, I will be extremely surprised. All this traveling around and the places they're traveling to and out of, Canada just basically said, you know what, no, you're not doing that. You're not coming up here. And since the local uh, administrations up in Canada didn't want to hear it, hear it, then it became a national mandate. So um, trying some, some uh, tests to, to basically see what will happen to increase interest uh, in anticipation of, of the uh, guaranteed to fail restart uh, too soon of sports. Um, you, you, you know, I've done a couple things, but they've actually created a lot more volume than I thought they would. So I'm, I'm testing a few more things. So the, the last couple of days of volume has been really high. Um, so you're going to continue to see that. It's probably going to grow. Um, I would be surprised if we don't see a, a million contract day pretty soon, which we've never had. So the record so far, as far as I know, because I've been watching it every single day, I don't miss a day. Um, I don't recall any day that we ever had 500,000 uh, contracts trade in a single day, but we did yesterday, which was the 18th of July, 2020. And then finally, Christmas in July. So everybody that... Uh, you guys have already gotten the emails because I see all the addresses. So um, all that stuff, I'm just going to keep it as a surprise. I think it's more fun that way. Uh, just watch your mail. You're, you're going to get the confirmation emails all through the day tomorrow, uh, and then I'll take it to the box, and you, you, everybody should be delivered. Um, there are a couple of international addresses, so I guess I probably should say it's going to be a little bit longer for some of you. But, but you'll get all that information to track it next week, and, and just 
you know, it's a, it's a sincere thank you for all you guys, especially the ones that stuck around through the really, really tough time uh, of the last, um, I mean, I would say the last year, but the last six months uh, make or break. And, and you're the ones that got us through it. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time. This may be a little bit long, but there's so many things uh, I think are important that you need to know. Uh, so that's why. Thank you very much. Um, have a nice weekend. What's left of it and stay safe with your friends and your family. Bye now.